the Lord a hand wave, a wave offering. Now let's thank God for the Carolinas. Let's thank God for Charlotte. And it is such an honor for us to be here with you. You know, the Lord always stirred up Zerubbabel, then he stirred up the priesthood, and then he stirred up the remnant. Tell somebody we're being stirred up here in the Carolinas. And I can't think of two ladies I love and honor more than Ann and Susie. Just welcome them here as they welcome you. I'm Susie and that's Ann. Welcome to the Embassy of Zion. Hallelujah. I love this. I'm used to doing this in my living room, not in a, in a theater of a thousand people. When the Lord gave us the name Embassy, we found out that's not a building. It is a body of people entrusted with a mission from a sovereign or government. Tonight, you're here as an ambassador, and we're all here entrusted with a mission from our sovereign, King Jesus. Hallelujah. Welcome. Welcome. Hallelujah. I want to, we do, we welcome every precious one of you who've come here to honor the Lord. And Lord, we honor you now. We say you are our God and we are your people. We acknowledge, we acknowledge that there are people here who have prayed for the glory to be unlocked for years. We acknowledge there are surely those from the great cloud of witnesses who are joining in this tonight. And we welcome the heavenly army, the mighty warriors, the angels of God. Welcome, angels, to come and help accomplish what God is doing tonight. We decree for the unlocking of the winds of glory tonight, and we say, Lord, we will hear your voice. We are listening to the winds of glory that you unlock for heart and strategy. We shall see our harvest. We are harvesters in Jesus' name. Woo! Now, Judah always goes first. Welcome, James Vincent, Leanne Squire, and Shatice and Gerald McLeod. Let's worship the Lord. Your praise is with 
somebody and say, God is doing a new thing in me. He's doing a new thing in this part of America. He's bringing us into who we are for the future. Now give a shout up into heaven. Before we sing it again, say, he knows where I'm at, but I'm going to a new place with him. Now let's sing it one more time and decree this is a dime he will unlock a new door and give you access.
Now let's welcome the wind of God into the Carolinas.
Let the voice of the uncommon thing be heard upon the wind. Let the voice of the uncommon thing be heard upon the wind. Let the voice of what carries us out of what we know. to you there's a sensitivity that's coming upon these states called the Carolinas I say they're going to know when the change for this nation fully comes in this hour I say they're going to perceive the shifting of the government when it finally shifts for I say from the Carolinas there will come a ruling voice that rises up that influences the direction of the nations of the world. I say to you, the Carolinas will be known for shifting this nation into a new flow of my spirit. I say to you, the Carolinas are becoming sensitive to the change, and there are two great battles ahead for this nation and the Carolinas will be known for changing a course of the way this land goes to war and enters into triumph. I say to you, I'm breaking down religious structures in these two states. And I'm realigning the army of the host above you. And I'm realigning the army of God within you. And I say to you, I will cause you to know the breakthrough anointing of my spirit upon these states. 
it will be known that the voice of God reigned from these states called Carolina and set a course for a movement from east to west, said the Lord. of the universities of this land. I'll bring them before national attention and their voice will sound differently than what they have sounded in the past. I say watch for my wind will enter everything that says university and college in the Carolinas. from your past will seem mild to the voice that I give you to direct nations, saith the Lord. I say to you, I will heal and make one those that you didn't think could be made one. I will redo structures and organization and realign councils and it will be said in Carolina, they rose up together and created a move of the Spirit and a school of the Spirit for a whole nation to be schooled in the future.
voice of harvest will rise in these states. For you will know and you will have a by redemptive plan of the harvest of this land. So I say the voice of harvest will rise again and be heard from these steps saying, here's the strategy of harvesting a nation. I say to you, the voice of harvest will arise. A mighty wind is blowing, windows of heaven opening, the sound of change is blowing all across the earth. The praise of God is sending, our prayers are heaven rending, his kingdom never ending, comes upon the I am in the process of tearing down and reordering. I say, say to my church, it is time to build again. Therefore, I will send the wind of rebuilding through these states, and Carolina will rebuild for the harvest ahead.
in this again we all have this card when we come together like this we want to make an offering a memorial offering of this event and so all of our blessings everything we write will go to embassy of zion and this will be known as the
the event that unlocked the winds across the nation. When you give, I want you to just get your offering ready because we're going to worship with it. And as we worship with it, if you're using cards, there's a place on this for you to put it. If you're writing checks, if you're writing cash, you should have anything you need. And then we're going to worship. We already have heard resurrection in this offering. We've heard the sound of war coming in from heaven in this offering. We've heard an unlocking of the voice of harvest in this offering. Lord, we come and we create a memorial tonight from the Carolinas where it's said, where we say, and it is said in heaven, a door was formed for the winds to come forth. Let's worship. You are the God of hope. You are the God of justice. You are the God of healing. The only God who heals. You are the God of hope. You are the God of justice. You are the God of healing. The only God who heals. Sing hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. For the Lord will bring new life into this land. As we worship Him and take our righteous stand. And the Lord will. God of hope. Now, when you have your offering, wave it before the Lord. This always ends and begins a season. All through the Word of God, they would have a wave offering. We're coming to the end and the finishing anointing tonight. And God brought us here to bring this thing into the place for this nation that the beginning is starting to stir and blow in. Father, we wave this offering to you. You are the God of hope. You are the God of justice. You are the God of resurrection power. We honor you tonight here in Charlotte, North Carolina. You are the God of hope. You are the God of justice. You are the God of healing. The only God who heals. You are the God of hope. You are the God of justice. You are the God of healing. The only God who heals. Sing hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. For the Lord will bring you 
that you say mighty God. You say mighty wind, mighty hope, mighty power. what this means because this doesn't happen to me very often but all of a sudden I saw the veil that had been over the worship in the Carolinas and all of a sudden the Lord said I'm lifting the veil now and all of a sudden you had the opportunity to move. One of Carolina's redemptive qualities is taking their stand for freedom. But some way or another, you've lost that redemptive call in the call of kingdom expression. And the Lord said, I'm lifting a veil. You're going to be able to move and have freedom in my spirit. You're going to be able to see interaction between heaven and earth. I'm going to cause you to see me move in these lands. And it will be spoken of far and wide, far and wide, how the fire fell, how the fire It will be spoken of far and wide How the fire fell How the fire fell How the fire fell Fell upon this flinty rock This flinty 
I say to you the separation of class and race and gender and religious divisions have caused a veil to come upon you. But I say tonight, you have gathered in a way that is causing that veil to lift on this land. I say now the land will see. China, and they will say, what is this in these lands called Carolina? How did they overcome that which tried to stop them in the past? How did they prosper in the midst of drought? I say to you, envoys are coming. And I say, Russia will say, we must be concerned from the voice that's arising in the Carolinas. And I say to you, I am causing a voice to arise that will send forth the word to change a nation from these lands. I say to you, tonight I have lifted a veil and things will change with acceleration. drive at night and so he somehow spirit of the Lord came on him and he pressed through and I fell asleep because I was super exhausted but when I woke up and I looked at him and we were in our driveway I saw that something had split and fallen off of him and it was like um a death shroud it was like a death shroud that had like split and I'm going to tell you, it was simply because something in him rose up and determined, this is what the course will be. And he was literally transfigured when I woke up. I was like, what has happened to you? It was like a shining, like a glory, like a, a mantle, like an anointing that was not there. And when Chuck said that, that um, the veil being rent, it was like that. It was like a shroud that was rent, and the glory began to just come through, and it was visible. It was now visible. Put your hand on somebody near you. Just say, it will be visible. Yes. The change is upon us. There will be a movement within you. I'm talking about individually. Put it on, put your hand on somebody and say, thing, the spirit is gonna move in you in a way like never before. We say visible change, visible change, visible change, visible change, visible change, visible change. We'll be seen on you, we'll be seen on you. We say visible change, visible change. You'll walk into the churches of these two states and you'll say visible change, visible change. You'll walk into the government places and say visible change. You'll go stand on the universities and say visible change.
what you see is visible change. The wind has blown the husk away, and now what you see is visible change. It's your glory. It's your glory. Shout it one more time. Thank God Judah led us first. Two or three people, you may be seated. Wow. I'm not sure where we are, but the Spirit of God is here. Thank God you're here. Thank God you have brought him. Just think about if there was no restraining force of the third person of the Godhead in the earth realm. Look at somebody and just tell them, I'm glad he's in you. What an honor being here. What an honor being with you. I, I have waited since last September. I've waited since last September because we were in uh, a meeting in New Jersey at Liberty City. Now, first of all, let me ask you this. How many are from South Carolina here? You stand up. Look at that. Look at South Carolina. Wow. Now, how many are from North Carolina? That is just awesome. Wow. What a joy. And then, then we have a wonderful group from New Jersey. New Jersey. Wow. Because we were in New Jersey, and the Spirit of God fell on us, and you would have thought God would have said something about the nation. It was last September. It's about a year ago. But he started speaking to the Carolinas. And it was just amazing to see what he longed to do here. And actually, it was by the time they got back, and it was very detailed in the word what he was saying. And by the time they got back, riots were starting to break out here in the Carolinas. But I'm here to tell you, it will be visible, the change in the spirit realm that comes into these states. Wow. Now, let me share a few things with you that will help us get focused uh, for the message tonight. And... Uh, and how the Spirit of God is so moving here to set course uh, of what he's doing. Now, the wind of the Spirit, Chad, if you're ready to shift with me, let's, let's just look how a wind is coming. Say it out loud. A wind is coming. Now, with that, the winds of the Spirit are bringing a performance and a finishing anointing. 
And uh, with that, I think that's what I see here in Carolina tonight. We're at this place where we're coming into a key moment. Everyone say a key moment. key moment. And I watch how God chooses the place where we're together. It's very important to him where we gather. Uh, faith works in time and in place. Now, there's a lot of materials out there for you that we brought. We're not selling materials, but we do uh, uh, suggest you get three pieces for $25. That will be able to get you everything you need, and it will be about the cost that we have to help you uh, in bringing things to you. So you can just get it out there and just grab hold of what you need, three books, three CDs. These guys have several CDs out there. We have lots of books. I've got a new book, A Time to Triumph, uh, and the Spiritual Warfare Handbook. And so those both are excellent. You really want to get those. Uh, that war series that has that started, God spoke to me in 1986 and gave me in 10-year increments through 2026. Someone I was with yesterday didn't, wasn't really a strong believer, <clears throat> and he said, how long will you preach? And I said, well, God showed me through 2026. And so uh, it's just easy to know he doesn't do anything without first telling the prophetic realm that he has in the earth realm what he's going to do. So let me just suggest you enter into that. Now, these three weeks we're in right now is key. Uh, they're, just, they're just the three key weeks of the transitional shift. Now, this is what God showed me for the Carolinas that will start happening tonight. Here in the Carolinas, there's going to be several things going on. First of all, there's this anointing for timing that is coming upon you. Second of all, there's open heavens that are starting to open. And God brought us here to open these heavens and to co-labor with both the angelic host and the army of God here in the earth in getting this portal Unlocked. And then he said, I'm going to send a new wind down from heaven into the Carolinas. Now, that's key for you to understand. All through the word of God, prophetically, when you see the word wind, you have to step back and say, God, what are you saying? Because the wind can be from God or it can be adversarial. And so what I see right now over the Carolinas is this major conflict that's going on over which wind will win. Say the God wind will win. And then I believe there's a new mantle that the Lord's bringing. Now let me remind you of timing. We're in this time where seven in the word of God is linked with uh, 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 Zion. It's a sword coming down. But it's not just a sword. It's a sword with a crown. So I felt like as we got closer to the shift of the year, we needed to be in the crown city. We needed to be in the queen city. Because this year represents new authority that we're living in. You've been going through a lot. Great testing in the midst of it. New authority, a new sharpness, a new boldness, a, 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 a new triumph ahead. But it also rep represents the crown of favor coming down. And it represents where God has determined the crown exists. And so it becomes very important that we follow after the Lord and to come to this city was so key at this moment. Now, in understanding biblical timing, 
we start shifting into new revelation in the three weeks ahead, but we don't get established in that revelation until April. And in the midst of March and April, we start getting established as we cross over in it. So right now, we're at a place where the Lord is saying, I'm looking at this region. I'm looking at the crown that it symbols a nation here. I'm looking at how this nation was formed from this region. And I'm looking at how you wear your crown in the future. And so this becomes a very, very important moment in time. Now with that, a major shift is occurring. Now nobody speaks on shift better than uh, the person that God has brought to speak to us tonight. But three years ahead will be determined by these next three weeks. That's a word for this nation. There is going to be so many things going on in the spirit realm over these next three weeks that it will determine our next three years. So here we are in the Queen City, the Crown City. And right now, it's something going on. Now here's a prayer during these three weeks that in Hebrew, the people of God pray. Because, see, they're approaching, uh, when you look at biblical history, they're approaching their sukkah time. Their celebration of leaving a wilderness and moving into the future. And so they've got to build a sukkah representing what they want to look like in the covering ahead. And so one of the prayers they start praying is out of Psalm 74, and it's about Leviathan. And you, you have to understand there's certain places where Leviathan has rule. And any time it's time for you to cross over into a new season, you have to face off Leviathan. It's what said happened at the Red Sea. Leviathan, Rahab was separated into pieces. His heads were cut off. Because Leviathan doesn't just have one head, he's got several heads, and he creates confusion with his voice from those heads. So he's bringing into this nation and into this region a clarity of the voice of God. And here's the prayer. Say, may it be your will, Lord our God. The God of our forefathers. One of the original states and territories that formed this nation. See, it's amazing. That just as we have dwelled in the sukkah of the past, So may we merit in the coming year that we dwell in the sukkah of Leviathan skin. Decree everything that tried to take you out in the last season, you're going to use it to cover your hands in the future. So there's a new covering, and the enemy's going to produce it. Everything the enemy is trying to do in these states, we say it's going to be used as a glory covering over these states. See, it's key. And right now, what this year means, what seven also means, see, it's linked with finishing, so there's this revisitation of promise that's going on. It's not about just new promises coming down yet. It's about God revisiting things he said 
in the past season. So all of a sudden, you're grabbing both of them and say, what didn't shine in that season will not shine in this season. So we're in this precarious, precarious place. And it's a year where we have to see. See, seven is linked with prosperity for the future. Now, you look at the Carolinas, they have a prosperity, a prosperity anointing, but they have a poverty war going on. So something's got to rule. Look at somebody and say, somebody's going to win. Say, prosperity's going to win out. Prosperity doesn't mean we're all going to be rich. It means we're going to succeed in what God has asked us to be and do. But it is linked with gold. So I want, to, I want you to watch as a sign the next three weeks, the gold market. Something will start shifting. And you'll know Carolina caused it. Look at somebody and say, you're going to shine like you've never shined before. <laughs> now here's one important principle for you. Your wars ahead unlock your provision for the next season. So I want to say this. There's going to be a lot of unlocking of provision because God's sending us in in a new way. He's doing something. We're seeing in a new way. He's causing us to see. He's causing a veil to be lifted. I don't know that I've ever seen that like it. I felt like all of a sudden I was enclosed by a veil as I was trying to lead you. It was right behind us, and all of a sudden God just pulled it up. And when he did, I could see Carolinas. Now, this is what we're moving toward. See, we're getting... We're in these three weeks causing this revelation of the word. The sword represents the word. Seventy, the season we're in, the chrono season, represents captivity breaking. It represents God watching us. And all of a sudden, we're approaching a new entryway. That's what eight's about. It was in... 2008, God revealed to me the future of what America looked like. It's written in a couple of the books out there, Apostolic Church Arising, Redeeming the Time, as well as the new book, A Time to Triumph. And so now we're coming into the testimony, 10 years later, of the opening of the gate of our future. leading us out of captivity. And the Carolinas are a chosen place that God is ready to blow through. Now, here's what has caused this gathering. A major wind. See, the Bible tells us in the churches, always listen to the wind words that God's sending to the church. He's blowing them by His Spirit through the church. Every word. See, I listen to everything that comes out of the Judah uh, alignment that God gives when we're in a meeting like this. Listen to the wind words that, that the Spirit is blowing through the church. And this is what He's saying about the Carolinas. There's a major wind that will blow. And don't get nervous that, because there's a big hurricane out there. <laughs> You've had hurricanes before. It's more to it than that. But a major wind will blow through the Carolinas that will cause an effect on every region of what's called America. I believe you're pressing open that movement of heaven 
so the wind blows through here. I want us to hear very clearly. I've watched today the Lord do something from the time we got to the airport early this morning. Uh, usually when you travel and you're one of the top travelers of the airline that we travel on, you just are immediately, it's one of the benefits, you're upgraded, but I went in on the upgrade list this morning. It was very unusual. I mean, it's so unusual, I don't even remember that happening. And so Chad went up to check, and they said, we don't know why he's not on the list, because they have a certain uh, group that they watch after. And so they had a seat left for me. And they put me in that seat, and I said, Lord, I'm going to watch real carefully what you do with this. Because I feel your spirit. I feel something about today is so unusual. And so this lady got on, and I was over by the window, and I said, can I put your bag up for you? And I got up and put her bag up. And she introduced herself, and she said, where are you from? And I said, uh, Corinth, Texas. She said, do you know anything about those glory people up there? <laughs> First words that came out of her mouth. I said, I know some about them. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get those two women on the front to stand up because, it, stand up, Marty, you and Ann. Do you see what sort of reputation y'all create for us? <laughs> and then I said, yeah, I'm actually part of that group. I, you know, I didn't want to say too much right at first because I didn't know where we were going with She said, do you know that man named Dutch Sheets? <laughs> the next sentence that came out of her mouth. I said, pretty well. I said, actually, I, and then I introduced myself. She said, oh my gosh. She said, my, I have two friends from California. Her husband was over one of the major companies in Dallas. She said, I had, I had two friends come from California uh, three years ago to go to one of your conferences, and they never invited me to go. I said, well, it, can get a little wild out there. That's what I said to her. She said, but I want wild. <laughs> and then I said, it's because that Dutch sheets guy visits out there all the time. <laughs> she said, I just finished one of his books on hope. She said, it, is one of, it has changed my life. She said, I'm actually on it the second time reading it. And so with that, I want you to welcome, stand and welcome this incredible gift in the body of Christ that, that causes people to talk about as we laugh. <laughs> we can go home now. I could go right now and be satisfied. I think probably that I speak for all of us. I don't know anybody that has more interesting and strange things happen to them than Chuck. Pierce. He walks in a different world. And when that um, prophetic anointing comes on he and his team, it's just amazing to, it's almost like sometimes I feel like I'm drinking out of a fire hydrant. Yeah. I'm just trying to get it and listen carefully. Uh, it's amazing. So it's been my uh, 
incredible pleasure to run with Chuck and his his team for many years. So I'm going to finish this up for us. He'll probably come back up and pray with me in a moment. But when we do these gatherings, we don't both preach long ser sermons. We kind of do tag team. and He'll come up for 20, 30 minutes, and then I'll come up for 20 or 30 minutes and, and uh, finish it up. But one of the things that we've learned to do is is to be very careful not to go into any region with a preconceived idea of what we're going to do. The Lord made it clear to us way back in 04, maybe 03 and 04 when we were doing that 50 state tour, that when he sends us someplace together, we are to go in and release the word of the Lord to that place, that region. And so we've been listening. We've been, <clears throat> excuse me, we've been on a 22-city tour. I had my schedule f as full as I wanted it this year. And sometimes when I see the caller ID and it's Chuck, I think, oh, oh Lord, what do I have to do now? <laughs> and the word of the Lord was, God says we have to go to 22 cities. Well, not, don't have to. The Lord says go to 22 cities. And I thought, when? <laughs> when could we do? That's why we're here on a Tuesday night, because we had to just start slamming these things in. But I'll have to say that these gatherings we've been doing have been a new level. And even on the 50 state tour, when we did this in all the states, uh, there was a lot more plowing and just sort of laboring intercession. It's almost like on these 22 cities, this included, that we're just riding some wave of momentum. Amen. And really, rather than trying to birth through intercession, we're, we're more just able to decree this is what the intercession of the last 25 years has produced. And don't be alarmed by all the shaking around you. Because the Lord is not alarmed by that. Sometimes he's behind some of it. Amen. Hebrews 12 tells us. And so you just have to keep in this season focused on the Lord. And listen to what he's saying. Not the news um, media and uh, not those that are angry and. You know, it's okay to be alert to that because we have to pray and we have to be discerning and, and listen. But at the same time, we don't take our direction from that. Amen. We listen to what the Lord is saying and we take our direction from that. And I've never been more convinced that we're moving toward a third great awakening in America. Yeah. And these 22 cities that we've been doing have confirmed that to me over and over again. We just were in Alaska a couple days ago. And same thing up there, everywhere we go, God is just, he's saying uh, in different ways, but he's telling us what's coming. So I, as I've listened tonight, just trying to tune in to what I'm hearing, the two words that uh, kept coming in the worship, and in the prophecy, and then Chuck spoke on one of those, the two words I kept hearing, not just in my spirit, but I'm talking about from, from others that God was emphasizing, were the words wind and voice. The voice of the Lord. And I decided about 30 minutes ago, what I'm supposed to talk about for a few minutes, just a few brief minutes, is the voice of the Lord. It didn't surprise me when he got up, because we don't talk about ahead of time. You do this, I'll do this. It didn't surprise me that he, he, he spoke on the wind. Well, God had already told me, you take the voice. So that both of these things are covered now. So I'm going to say, I'm going to mention to you five things that Holy Spirit emphasized to me as I've been just listening that have to do with his voice. Let me begin this by saying, I, I was sent 
on a very specific assignment from the Lord at the end of last year. And I knew I had an assignment coming and I knew I didn't know what it was yet. I knew I was trying to hear. I was speaking in a conference for Chuck and I, and I looked at him at one point and a lot of people thought I was, I was uh, trying to be funny because Chuck and I, we kid around and we do, you know, pick at each other once in a while in a, in a, a, a friendly way. But I was desperate to hear from God and I looked at him at one point and I said, you need to hear a word from God for me. <laughs> right in the middle of my sermon. And everybody just did, did just what you're doing. Except for Chuck. And when I said it, I saw him flinch. He went. And I knew he got it right then. And he ran up at the end of my message and he prophesied to me. And he said, I got it. He told everyone, I, was, I heard the word of the Lord for this assignment when he said that. And he prophesied that I was going to take a team to seven cities in America. And he mentioned in the prophecy six of them. I knew what the seventh place was. And then we were to go and retrace the seven places where God had established covenant with, him, with us, with America, between America and him. And we were to reestablish covenant with the Lord. And we, we did that. He said, you, God will give you a team and you go to these seven places. And the Lord gave me that team and we, we went, uh, I think it was just maybe a week later. We just put it together fast. But what he said was, if you will do this, the Lord will reestablish his covenant with us, with America. And then he said, and the voice of the Lord will return to the land. And we, we fulfilled our assignment, but I, the Lord keeps bringing me back to this that there is a new release of his voice coming to this nation. That means the prophetic anointing is about to go to an entirely new level. That means it's about to become much more accurate. That means there's another wave of prophetic outpouring, not just prophecy, but prophetic anointing, prophetic gifting, dreams, visions, revelation from scripture, Anything that has to do with God coming to us, whether it's through the word, whether it's through the prophets, whether it's while you sleep, that's all associated with the word of the Lord. There is a new season we are moving into where the voice of the Lord is released to us. And when that begins to happen, not only does the voice of the Lord come to the church, the voice of the Lord comes to the sinner. Because when the spirit of revelation, when the prophetic anointing, when the voice of the Lord is released, bringing the spirit of revelation into a place, not only do God's people hear his voice, but unbelievers begin to hear his voice. He's like in the Bible, when kings that didn't know God, heathen, idol-worshiping kings, were given divine dreams that shaped history. Revival in the past, when the voice of the Lord, when, when, when the spirit of revelation begins to come in revivals, People, sinners will drive by churches and come in and say, I want to get saved. Amen. You know, they just begin to hear, hear God's voice. They don't know that's what they're hearing, but they're drawn to him. They hear a sound. So the voice of the Lord is about to be released. And for some reason, he really zeroed in on that here. He said, here in the Carolinas, you're going to hear the Lord's voice in a new way. He actually implied, he already said it, it was the fire hydrant was too, too, coming at me too fast. That, you're gonna, that it's going to come here in ways that begin to shape the rest of the nation and even the way we go to war and the way we fight. He actually said the next three weeks will shape the next three years and when it happens, you'll know it the first year what he said. So the voice of the Lord is about to be released to us. Expect a deluge of dreams to start coming. You dreamers, get ready. If you're, if you're one who hears the voice of the Lord in those ways, get ready. Pastors, leaders, get ready to start receiving and uh, moving in, receiving and moving in a new heightened, new sense of revelation of the Word.
So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to, I'm, 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 I need to move fast now because I'm going to, I'm going to just tell you five things that we can look for that are associated with the voice of the Lord. Number one, the voice of the Lord creates. One of the, we all, we all know Genesis 1, John chapter 1, both, it happened in Genesis 1, it's referenced again in John chapter 1, that all things were made by the word. He even holds it together. Hebrews 1 says, he even holds all things together. All creation is held together by his word. And the word asa is associated with creation. It's one of the two Hebrew words for create, A-S-A-H, asa. It means perform, it means accomplish, it means do, but it also means create. And it's associated not only with Genesis, he spoke and his words created, but it's associated with us when we release the word or voice of the Lord into the earth. Isaiah 55, 11 says, so shall my words be that go forth out of my mouth. And the words going out of his mouth there were, were, were words that he was going to speak through the prophet. They didn't just come out of the clouds. So when the prophet were speaking his words, so shall my words be that go forth out of my mouth, and I'm at it through these prophets, because that's what was happening, they won't return to me void, but they'll accomplish what I please. They will assign. They will create what I want. My words will create. Jeremiah, how can all this happen? Jeremiah says, you know, he says, you're going to pluck up, you're going to uproot things, you're going to tear things up, and then you're going to build and plant. How's this going to be? And how am I going to be a prophet to a nation? As a young man, he says, he said, you're going to do it because I did it. Because what he said was, I want my words to perform that. That's how you're going to do this. Perform as I saw. Create. There is a creative force in the word of the Lord. Some of you need to, you need to get that out of the recesses of your mind and to the forefront of your thinking because God is going to start bringing declarations to you. He's going to start bringing back prophetic words to you. He's going to ask A creative, there's a creative force that is released when God talks. There is a creative power that has been released in this room tonight because of the word of the Lord that has come forth. And he will watch over those words to perform it. The same words used in Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie, son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and will he not do it? I saw. He will do, perform, accomplish, create his words. Number two, he births with his words. He births with his words. When God sent the angel to Mary, he said, you're going to have a son. He's the Savior. She was a virgin. She said, how can this be? He said, well, the Spirit of the Lord's going to come and overshadow you. There's two words in the Bible, Hebrew and Greek, rakaf episkiazo. They have to do with the overshadowing, hovering presence of God that comes and gives birth to things. Genesis 1 says the Spirit of God rakaf. Luke chapter 1 says to Mary, the Spirit of God is coming to Rakoff or Episkiazo around you. And then he follows it up with a statement that is not translated well in most of our Bibles. The angel then says, for with God nothing will be impossible. But the correct translation in Greek, literally, and this is absolute the most literal translation you can find of this verse, Luke 1, 37, that is often translated with, with God, nothing shall be impossible. What it really says is, for no word spoken by God is without power. 
for no word spoken by God is without power. And there where the power was in the context of birthing, of giving birth to Messiah. In Genesis, it birthed the planet. It brought forth creation. In fact, the very seed of the Lord, the New Testament says, when he speaks to us, his seed goes in our heart to bring forth fruit, 30, 60, and 100 fold. The Bible, the New Testament says we are born again of the incorruptible seed, the word of God. In those passages, the very word for seed is the Greek word sperma. He is saying to us that what, and, and, and we'll get the word spore from it, sperm or spore, He's saying to us that which happens in the natural when a spore or a sperm is planted in the right place, then something is birthed. He's saying, that's what happens in the spirit realm with my word. When my word goes into your spirit, you become pregnant with my life. Could be revelation, could be the miracle you need. You can get pregnant with your miracle here tonight. You can take the word of the Lord about breakthrough and new beginnings and creative power. And if you need a miracle, you can leave here decreeing by his strength. I am healed right away in your Bible. And at this day, I am healed. And the word of the Lord will just start growing in you until your miracle is birthed. Because no word spoken by God is without power. It has reproductive ability. The last thing the devil wants you to do is start speaking the word. If it's powerful enough that, that, the, that the Lord himself, rather than argue with the devil when he was being tempted, chose to just speak the word, then you know he must be pretty powerful. I don't, even, I don't even need to converse with you. Let, he just said, it is written. It is written. It is written. That's what we need to say over, well, I don't want to get sidetracked. I won't get sidetracked. I'll just say this way. Just say it is written over Korea. Just say what God says, not what Un says. Yeah. Am I saying his name right? Yeah. Un, Un. Start calling him Un. Wait, let's, let's be sure we get, I was sitting there and the Lord just said, I brought you to the Carolinas to tell that Korean thing to shift. There you go. There you go. Come on. There you he go. Said, it will shift in the Carolina. Come on. There you go. Tonight. We said tonight the court. Yeah. We said the court of that man will shift tonight. And start shifting. And the Lord said, because you have this, have had this meeting, you will see the court of that man is starting to shift from the Carolina. stuff. That's big stuff. It's big stuff. Sometimes you get in meetings and the, the prophetic anointing of the Lord is just hovering in the place. It's just here. And so the prophets are hearing and decreeing. I'm saying things and, and I don't plan to say them. I just go there and he gets up and does his thing and, and it's not time for a World War Three. There's a big harvest that's coming to Asia. Okay. Number three. And we've been hearing it all night. They were singing about it. The voice of the Lord resurrects. Yes. Yeah, they kept singing about it from Ezekiel 37, the dry bones. 
the coming together and the army that results. So the, the voice of the Lord is just so filled with life that it resurrects and brings life where there is death. I tell you something, uh, and Jesus, Jesus said, my words are spirit and life. J John 6, 63, he said, the words that I say to you are spirit and life. And my spirit le just leaped earlier when Chuck prophesied something about anything in these states, in the Carolinas, that is called a university or a college. It's about to be visited with the wind of the spirit. And we're about to see one of those most dramatic, not just in the Carolinas, but he's highlighting you right now. We're about to see one of the most dramatic outpourings of Holy Spirit on a generation that planet Earth has ever seen coming to the young people in this nation and other nations. There is a wind of God coming to the colleges, universities, high schools, junior high schools, grade schools in America. And God's about to pour His Spirit out and let His wind blow on a young generation that is about to be revived and resurrected. The most dramatic, probably the most dramatic vision I've ever had was the week of 9-11, 2001, when I was in Boise, Idaho, and I got up to speak and uh, I, I couldn't get there, obviously, for three or four days because the airline shut down. When I, when I did fly there, I, I, I got up and tried to speak to a conference of about 1,500 people just saying, Lord, what are we going to do here? I mean, talk about the elephant in the room. I mean, you're going to get in here and act like everything's fine and just preach some sermon. Nobody's thinking about anything else. There's still a cloud over the nation. They're still counting bodies and trying to dig you know, look for survivors. The whole thing was just surreal. And I tried to speak, and I don't know what I was talking about, but I was probably 10 minutes into my message, and the finger of God started writing on the back wall of that room. And it became a neon light on the back wall. It said Acts 319. Times of refreshing. When there's repentance time... Times of refreshing come from the presence of the Lord. And I said, Lord, and I said to myself, just in my mind, well, I know what to do. As soon as I finish this point, I'm going to Acts 3, 19. And the, and the light started flashing at me. And the interpretation was, I don't want you to finish your point. <laughs> it's really encouraging when the Lord lets you know <laughs> I'm not into what you're saying right now. You need to just leave that alone and do this. And I preached for about 10, 15 minutes from that verse of Scripture, and then I started having an open vision, which lasted about 30 minutes. And I just narrated what I was seeing. It was like watching. It was like being in a movie theater and watching this thing. And I say that to say that the entire vision was about the revival that is coming to the colleges and universities of America. The fire of God that's coming, the life of God, it was, now, when I say this, you, have to, you need to know I'm not exaggerating. What he showed me happening in that vision was completely out of control. <laughs> completely out of control. Nobody could control it. Nobody, nobody could stop it. The university leaders, professors, administrators, no demons could stop it. No religious spirit could stop it. Nothing could stop it. It was out of control. And it was Holy Spirit led. It wasn't a program. And I'm not against programs. It wasn't, you know, some organized thing. It was just you know what a wildfire is? You've seen, we've seen them on the news. This was just a wild fire controlled by Holy Spirit. And he was just working miracles, leading people to Jesus. Mass deliverances were taking place on campuses. Signs and wonders. Classes canceled. Sporting events were canceled. Not that they, those things are bad. It's just that God interrupted everything. It 
It was a holy interruption. That's what the voice of the Lord does. So don't you ever go by another college or university in America without prophesying to it that the third great awakening, the fire of God and the life of God and the supernatural of God and the blessing of God is coming to this place. Because the voice of the Lord resurrects. Paradigms are going to change overnight. Instructors and professors are going to get in on it. Atheists one day, in love with Jesus the next. Don't think I'm trying to hype you and kid around with you. I'm as serious as I can possibly be. I saw it. I turned to the leaders at one point in that vision, and they thought I was trying, you know, they didn't want to think if I was trying to be what I meant, but I just looked at him and I said, this is going to be really hard to steward. <laughs> and, the, and the reason I said that is because it was so intense and it was so big and they were so out of any religious box. They were, they, 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 they were just, they were raw. They didn't know anything about religion. They just all of a sudden had been visited by God. They did not want our religious structure and our methods and our boxes we have him in. They just wanted to go after God with a whole lot of passion and fire and intimacy and it was out of control. The voice of the Lord resurrects. Number four. The voice of the Lord brings direction. Revelation. Get ready. Get ready for such a level of the voice of the Lord being re released that these kind of meetings become common. And you're going to get in meetings where the voice of the Lord begins to flow, and you just, you, you just, the, the, the hardest call to make in the entire meeting is when do, we, when do we transition this thing or stop it? And direction will come for people, individuals, organizations, congregations regions like tonight, nations. The voice of the Lord is even going to speak and bring direction where he's not allowed to do it. Like government buildings and schools and some religious groups that teach that he doesn't talk anymore. Yeah. And some of the people teaching that now are going to be prophesying a year from now. Yeah. I'm going to say that again because I know that's a thus saith the Lord. So there are people teaching today that God doesn't talk anymore that a year from now will be standing in front of people like this prophesying and giving words of knowledge and working signs, wonders, miracles. Their entire life is about to go through a radical shift because they're going to get introduced to the place of the Lord. Direction is coming. You're going to hear that voice behind you saying, this is the way you walk in it. Leaders and ministries are going to have supernatural leadership from Holy Spirit, like Paul in Acts 16. They just say, we're going to go over here, and they're, and, and they're going to have a check from Holy Spirit 
don't do that. And we're going to go here, don't do that. We're going to launch this program, don't do that. We're going to do this in our city, don't do that. And say, well, what are we doing? A dream is going to come to you, and somebody's going to say, come over here in this neighborhood. We need you now. Or start emphasizing this in this house or ministry. We need this now. Or get this ready because this is coming. Supernatural leadership and direction and revelation is coming to the church. And there's no other way to lead an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And there's no other way to lead a, a nation in the co context of that which we're about to face because crazy people around the world, are going. To, some of them are going to stay crazy. Yeah. And we're going to have to have leaders who are anointed by Holy Spirit and hear from God and know what to do and how to do it and what not to do. And, and the liberals don't like what I'm about to say. And some people, I know there are people that don't like President Trump, and he wasn't my first choice, but once we have a president, we're supposed to pray that God uses that president. I mean, I don't want to be dishonest. He wasn't my first choice during the primaries. He was my first choice during the election. And I'm not trying to make, get, I'm not trying to get political. I just don't want to be dishonest and give the wrong. I mean, I, I felt like for the courts and the babies alone, I just, I just needed to, to go the way I went. But that's not my point in all this. My point is, we got to pray for this man and his cabinet. And here's what, I, here's what I was leading up to that the liberals don't like. There are more professing evangelical Christians on staff and in leadership in that cabinet now than any other administration in history. It is estimated, and these are, these, are, these, are, these are secular people that don't like it that are saying this, not people like me that are just trying to hype you. That's not what's happening. They estimate 75% of his staff and cabinet are born-again evangelical Christians. So that gives me, that gives me hope that even when he says something that's can we just be real nice? That's not all that wise, maybe. <laughs> that God still has people around him that are praying and that can lead and that can speak. And that I believe there's more and more wisdom going to be released to our government officials and, and, and state governments and in local governments and in our national government and in the courtrooms. And in the, we're going to have to keep praying until this thing shifts so that our leaders can get direction from heaven, even when they don't know they're getting direction from heaven. The voice of the Lord, he said, if you go do this, the voice of the, go on this tour and go reestablish covenant with me, my voice will return to this land. So here's what I'm praying and here's what I'm believing. I believe that there's an open heaven, that, that we're going to get to the point where there's an open heaven over the White House. Yeah. And people come in and stumble their way through cabinet meetings and finally just say, I don't know how to say this other than just say it, because I know this is kind of different, but I had a dream last night we need to talk about. It. It'll be all right with you. As though God would not want to speak to the American government, the most powerful agency, organization in the world. As though God would not want to influence them. We're to pray that he does. Then we should believe he's going to answer our prayer and start decree decreeing over our government that, that, that there's an open heaven and the voice of the Lord is returning to the government of America. There they are. 
Number five, I'm going to finish with this. The voice of the Lord judges his enemies. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Rome and Ephesians 6, 17, and in Revelation 1, 16, 2, 16, both reference the sword of the Lord. His voice, his word. The same voice that brings life brings death. We are not to move into a presumptive mindset and think we have the right to start cursing people and take on his role. In fact, we should just always be asking God for mercy and grace and pour your spirit out. Change this person. But there does come a time, and especially when we're dealing with the spirit realm, which is what Ephesians 6 is all about, principalities and powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, wicked spirits in high places. When you're dealing with spiritual forces, it is the voice of the Lord, the word of the Lord. You take your Bible, you open it up to a passage that relates to the situation, and you begin to decree the word of the Lord over that situation, and it becomes the sword of the Lord, according to Ephesians 6. So I find myself responding to what I see on the news about Korea, for example. And say, but this is what the Lord has shown me. This is the harvest that he has shown me. This is the wind he showed me when I was over there in June in South Korea and went to the demilitarized, demilitarized that place between the two countries, the DMZ. <laughs> to prophesy the word of the Lord. Amen. But he showed us in that conference that we were, that we, that Chuck was there, Cindy Jacobs was there, I was there, several others. We saw the K Korean Peninsula as a wind tunnel. And the Spirit of God was blowing up through that peninsula into Asia. And all of Asia was impacted. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen in Asia. Not right, there's not going to be third world war right now. There's going to be the third great awakening right now. It's going to be the greatest outpouring of Holy Spirit and the greatest influx of souls in that part of the world all the way over into the Middle East. The greatest harvest in the history of planet Earth is about to take place in Asia and the Middle East. And there, may be, there may be some shaking. I don't know all the details that are coming, but I'm going to tell you this. There's not going to be something happens that's strong enough to distract or disrupt what God is about to do. He's going to blow with his spirit through there, and he's going to bring down the strong man, and he's going to bring a season of enough peace to shake that part of the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ like it's never been shaken before, and you're going to see at least a billion souls saved. He's not finished with China. And Indonesia and Thailand and Singapore. And Mongolia and the Philippines and Japan and North Korea. There's such a big harvest about to take place there. And God is he's gonna, he's gonna bring judgment to the powers that resist him. And he's gonna bring freedom to millions of people, spiritually speaking. And that includes the Muslim world. Hearing from if you're really hearing from God, you don't have hatred to the Muslim world. You love the Muslim world. I don't have hatred for Islam or the Islamic people. I love them. I'm praying for harvest. I'm sowing my books over there. 
prophesy and send the word of the Lord over there, sending people over there, putting my money and my finances into it. Not, they're not my enemy. I mean, some of the, the radical terrorists, I get, you know, I'm not, they're our enemies. We have to deal with them. But I'm talking about in general. Right. Lord loves those people. He loves them. He wants to pour his spirit out on them in amazing ways. So I'm going to wrap this up. Chuck. <laughs> you can either come up here and join me, or if you're finished, you can stay there and agree, but we're going we're gonna to release the voice of the Lord to create, to birth, to resurrect, to bring direction, and to judge his enemies. You want to jump in? Now, <laughs> you heard Dutch say something about at, you heard something through tonight, and there's something about when he said that about the wind tunnel uh, Korea being the wind tunnel God brought us here to unlock the movement from the Carolinas that will even create the wind tunnel through Korea come on, let's man. stand come up on, come on come on come on come on I, I'm telling you you will word. know from that's a word this day forward that something from the Carolinas created a wind movement that moved all the way through the Korea Peninsula. Mm. Mm. The Spirit of God is on this place all through the universities where it could be stopped. I mean, I, I don't know of a place I've ever said that for a territory or seen it. I saw it on Rutgers and we met there. But I saw it in the Carolinas. I mean, it's just an explosion of on the universities that is known about. It can't be stopped. See, there's a wind coming through here. There's an explosion of a prophetic mantle on you. The Carolinas were meant to be prophetic. When you look at their history, they were called to be prophetic. Even part of the Virginia Commonwealth, they broke out. I feel like God singled them out as a prophetic avenue. Now, Father, we loose this anointing that's here tonight. You gathered us here. Yeah. You moved us here. Yeah. Lord, we send it out from yeah. here. Yeah. Put your hand on somebody near you and just stir up that prophetic anointing in yeah. them. Yeah. Lord, we send it out everywhere we yeah. walk from this place. Yeah. Every place we go from this place. Yeah. 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 Wind of God, blow upon these people now. We send them as spirit wind driven people. Led by the spirit, the wind. Filled with the spirit, the wind. Wind driven, wind led, spirit led people. We send them filled with your spirit, your breath, your wind. Tell somebody next to you, you're becoming a wind generator. Yeah. Out of your belly. You're going to start generating the wind. Out of your this. belly. Out of your spirit. Out of your spirit. Out of your spirit. Wind generator. Yeah. Wind, wind, voice, 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 wind of 
God, voice of God, to create, to birth, birthing the wind. There's something about the, probably because of your royal beginnings, there's something about the class structure that is over this particular territory called the Carolinas that God is getting ready to obliterate. There's going to be a, a realignment of his kingdom people and class is not going to stop the realignment. It's not just racial issues in this, the, what's called the Carolinas, it's a class structure. And the Lord says, I'm going to realign my kingdom yeah. people within yeah. the Carolinas. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we say the wind of your spirit and the voice of your spirit is coming for that re to bring that realigning. We say that every weapon formed against this is now being dealt with by the voice of the Lord and the wind of God. And century old structures will now be dismantled by the Spirit of God in this nation. And the Carolinas will model a new beginning for this land of racial healing. And out of the Carolinas, you have probably had the most influential voice of harvest that has come through Billy Graham and what has come from here. But God says, I am ready to take that, move it into its next mantle, yeah. move it out into. Yeah. It's, yeah. That's what's going to spread through yeah. the universities. Yeah. It's going to do something. There's prophetic words linked with the native communities and the first peoples and the universe. God said there is so much prophetic word over the Carolinas that has never been poured out. I've got to send a wind to dump the bowls that are over you. Yeah. Yeah. So Lord, we call forth the anointing in those words, the prophetic words, the destiny, the purpose the gospel, all that has gone forth over this region, we say this is the season of fulfillment, and now it goes to another level. It goes to the double portion mantle and anointing of harvest, of evangelism, from this place to the earth, the ends of the earth. Some of the most resistant structures to the wind of the Spirit have come up in the Carolinas. The Lord said He's ready to blow that over. Yeah. 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 Lord, we say you are judging the, the, those forces that have withstood you. You are judging those spirits and you are judging those systems that have worked against you in order to free people. We are not speaking against people. We are speaking against the powers of darkness and that which they have created. We say that your word is now bringing judgment against that which has held back this wind and it will hold back the wind no longer because the voice of the Lord is releasing the wind of God into the wilderness places. We say that that wind will be like the wind that came in Ezekiel 37 from the four corners, the north, south, east, and west, until it became a vortex, a tornadic wind of heaven that began to breathe upon dry bones and cause them to come together and fill them with life and become an army. And I prophesy over this region now that the four winds of God are coming to the Carolinas. Yeah! 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 University, university, and college to have activity. 
We loose it right now. There's going to be such movement that it can't be stopped. And I hear the Lord saying something else. He said, you try to bring order before my wind settles. The Lord says, back off from your last order and let me blow. Then let the yeah. order be established. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let the wind blow. Let the wind blow. Let the wind blow. Let the Just wind say blow. it. Just say it out loud. Lord, let, let the, the wind, wind blow. blow. Let the yeah. wind blow. Susie, you and Ann, come up for just a second. This is for all of us, but we'll just use them as our touch point. The Lord says you have to have this new mantle that I have sent you for a time such as this. You guys come out here so we can see it. Dutch will help me. This mantle was made and given to us. And it's got lions on both sides. And the Lord, when I was praying over this uh, this week and, and last week, the Lord said, that's for both Carolinas. The Lord says, the roar of my spirit yeah. is coming through. The roar is coming through the Carolinas. Yeah. And the Lord said, this will be sent. It will be released in both states. Yeah. It will be released on campuses. It will yeah. be sent into organizations. Yeah. The Lord said, the double portion roar of my spiritual force is over the Carolinas this hour. Let's give a shout. Let that roar rise. a gift that we could just present to you both and so we're really we feel so blessed that at the crowning point of the year of the crown this is where you are and so we got gift number one what I heard from the Lord it's a crown catch-all and what what interested me what I noticed in scripture when I when I looked up crown caught me off guard and there's two places where Paul talks about to the ones that he's writing to you are my crown mm. and so I want to say on behalf of all of us who have been so blessed and touched by your ministry we are your crown both of you I didn't know there was such a thing as
is a catch-all. But I just declare and decree over both of you that at the Lord's bidding, everywhere you cast your net, you will catch all. Now, the double portion comes here, and that is Ann and I both sought the Lord for a gift, and Ann got something completely different. On behalf of all of us, are you flying high right now, moving up in the heavenlies? Chuck and Dutch may um, remember this unlocking the winds of glory with uh, the symbol of this next gift. Uh, for Chuck first, it represents the manifold wisdom of God that's being made known where in the heavenly places to the powers oh. and principalities. Wow. And these colors, <gasps> these colors <laughs> remind us of the manifold wow. wisdom of God. Also the colors of the nations. Chuck is an apostle wow. to the nations. Wow. It's also multidimensional. Wow. And do you notice he often uses this slide of Oh, the portal over us in the heavenlies where the revelation can come down. And this is, this is just like that. This is a workable flying kite. It's also kite art. Wow. And what a great combination to give to wow. the apostle that is just so dear to us, our wow. apostle Chuck Pierce. Wow. 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 And Bobby, this is your cue because we have a special kite also for you, Dutch. And we'll present it this way. Oh. a lot of wind out there in Colorado. We figured you could fly that somehow. <laughs> it's amazing. Thank you. It's incredible. Every time we, uh, we'll fly this. You'll, when you see, you'll see it on a video from the prayer garden. This will be flying. It's incredible. And we'll decree that the Carolinas are moving under a new mantle of the manifold wisdom of God. Amen. And that eagle, I can't think of a better kite that represents Dutch sheets. Let's thank God for these gifts. Yeah. <laughs> now let's send us out with a sound. This is a year we're coming in with the sword, but the sound is a year of a new song coming forth. So look. And listen carefully for this sound. And I was just inspired seeing that kite and seeing Dutch just to sing this part. <laughs> America, America, God shed His grace on thee and crown.
and go through your mouth. We call out to dead hearts, come alive, come alive. Dump out of the ashes, let us see an army rise. We call out to troubles, come alive. She's all. 